Hey everyone, I thought I'd talk a little bit today about electrical impedance. Uh, this is a topic that uh, confuses a lot of people, probably because it's taught sort of backwards in my opinion, where a lot of people you know, spend all their time on the heavy duty math involved and then kind of end with a practical circuit. But I like to go the other way and start with a practical circuit and then as we move along uh, uncover the topics as they become relevant. So let me show you what I have set up today. Our task for today is to build a circuit that can power just a standard cheapo plain LED uh, directly from the AC mains uh, while using as few components as possible and to do it in a relatively energy efficient manner. So to start, uh, we may come up with a circuit that looks something like this, where the LEDs are set up back to back so that as the uh, AC power switches direction, one of the LEDs will light up. Uh, so one will be on for, for both halves of the cycle. But obviously we can't connect the LED right up to, to house current because the voltage is so high that there would be way too much current flowing. So if you just took an LED, don't do this by the way, and just put it right into the outlet, it would probably explode in a violent pop because the amount of current would be measured in, you know, hundreds or thousands of amps or something. So what we can do to keep that from happening is to put a big fat resistor between the LEDs and the, uh, the loop formed by the, the power source. So how do we figure out what resistor value? Uh, we can do that by measuring the LED. I measured this cheapo green LED and it just came up to be about 18 milliamps at two volts. And I got that number just by connecting it to my power supply and just getting a really quick, you know, rough reading. Okay, so if we know that the voltage across the line is 120 volts on average for, for one cycle, um, the current will flow out through the line, through the diode, through the resistor and back. And this whole thing reverses obviously when the AC goes into the other phase. So we'll just look at this one phase. So we've got 120 volts here, uh, 118 volts here, because we know the diode is gonna drop two volts at the proper current. And then the resistor has to drop 118 volts at the proper current. So then we just use Ohm's law, uh, voltage over current, 118 volts over 18 milliamps. Remember to always enter the units in standard uh, units, so amps, not milliamps. And we end up with 6.6 .6 .6 kilo ohms. Okay, easy enough. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, just change that up just a little bit and this will become clear later on. What I'm gonna do is put 1K here and 5.6K here. And that may seem a little strange right now, but this will make sense later on. The LEDs don't really care whether the resistor is on the left side or the right side. So splitting the resistor and stuff like that doesn't really change anything with the circuit. So here it is. Uh, you can just see the, the small resistor, the two LEDs, and this is a big resistor. Using a big resistor was necessary because this is going to dissipate some pretty serious power. I should also point out that uh, unless you're familiar with the hazards involved with, you know, AC line current, uh, you probably would not want to try this one home. This is more of a demonstration. So I'm going to plug this in. The LEDs come on. And hopefully you can see, yeah, it's drawing about 2.2 watts according to this meter. So 2.2 watts for those two measly, resist or two measly LEDs is not very good at all. If you were an electrical engineer and you came up with this, uh, the Energy Star people would not be very happy with you at all. So I'm going to unplug it. And just after those, just after those five, five or ten seconds of running, uh, this, this resistor is, you know, not burning hot, but pretty good, good and warm. And if this were left running for 10 minutes or something, that resistor might be too hot to even hold. It's a, well, it's a five watt resistor. It would get pretty warm. So we got to come up with another design. And that design is this. So what I've done is replaced the resistor. This was the first design here, hold on a sec. 
basically just replace R2 with a capacitor. So you might be thinking, well, what's that going to do? They actually serve a very similar purpose in the circuit. They both uh, serve to limit the current. So let's, I, I built the capacitor circuit. That's over here. Basically the same thing with just a capacitor in place of that fat resistor. So let's plug this one in. The LEDs are about as bright as they were the first time, but notice the power meter. It's only drawing 0.4 watts instead of 2.2. So our change, the change from a resistor to a capacitor has actually made our circuit quite a bit more efficient. So let's take a look at why. I'm gonna unplug this and also discharge the capacitor. It had a little tiny pop. I don't know if you heard that or not, but you wouldn't want to, if you did build this circuit, keep in mind that when you unplug from the wall here, that capacitor is gonna store a charge and uh, you know just short it out like this. Like I say, you should probably be familiar with, with 120 volt safety if you're gonna attempt this one. So let's take a look at that schematic again. Okay, so I said that the capacitor and the resistor in the, in the first circuit are serving similar purposes. Uh, they're both restricting the amount of current that can flow through this circuit. And this, the uh, units that we use to describe a restriction of current are ohms. So these both actually have uh, a value that we can state in ohms. But why are capacitors not rated in ohms? Like if you go to a, a electronics catalog and look down the list of capacitors, nothing is in there is going to say anything about ohms. So how do we do it? We use this formula right here. 1 over 2 pi times the frequency in hertz times the capacitance in farads. So this capacitor is 0.47 microfarads and the frequency is 60 hertz because we, I, I'm in the United States and, and all the uh, line power is 60 hertz here. So 1 over 2 pi times 60 times 0.47 times 10 to the negative 6. And if you calculate this all out, you get 5.6 kilo ohms, just like in the first circuit. They're almost exactly equivalent. Um, and so this, uh, this value here, x, is called reactance. And reactance is basically a uh, resistance to uh, alternating current flow. So they're both you know, in ohms. This is the same ohm value as the resistor. The difference is that the reactance depends on the frequency. So the reason they don't print capacitors with ohm values in a catalog is because they don't know what kind of circuit you're going to put it in. So if we were using this in Europe where the power is 50 hertz, the ohm value would be slightly different because the frequency is different. So what's impedance? Impedance is the combination of reactance and resistance. Unfortunately, we can't just add them together. Impedance, which is represented by Z, is equal to the square root of the resistance squared plus the reactance squared. And uh, you geometry guys out there will see that this is how to calculate the length of a hypotenuse, knowing the uh, leg lengths of a triangle. So we'll get into this later. But just for now, I just wanted to show you where impedance comes from. Impedance is just the combination of the pure DC resistance and the AC resistance, known as reactance. So the impedance of a resistor, Z equals the square root of R squared plus zero because a resistor doesn't have any reactance. A resistor has the same resistance at all frequencies if it's perfect. A capacitor has no resistance if it's perfect and it has reactance. So the, the impedance of a pure resistor is just the resistance and the impedance of a capacitor is just the reactance. And we had the formula here for the reactance of a capacitor is just one over two pi, the frequency times the capacitance. So I'm just gonna show you that you can't, if we, let's say we wanted to know the uh, entire amount of our impedance for our whole circuit here. What's, what's the impedance for this whole thing? We're gonna make a really nasty assumption here. We're gonna assume that the LED is actually behaves like a resistance, which of course it doesn't, but in this case, it's not going to make much difference because uh, it's such a small part of the circuit. So here's the Z total for our whole, we're gonna approximate the resistor with a 110 ohm resistor. So we've got 1K, plus 110 squared 
plus 5,600 squared and take the square root of that. So the entire impedance for the whole circuit is 5.7 kilo ohms. So basically impedance is just a resistance that depends on frequency. That's really all it is. And so with a capacitor at higher frequencies, it will have a lower impedance and at higher impedance at lower frequencies. So think what would happen if you took a capacitor and just put it across a power supply. Once the capacitor charges up, no current flows because that capacitor is infinite resistance at DC currents. Let me just draw this out here. For a capacitor, uh, this is reactance and this is frequency. When the frequency is low, it's you know, zero basically, the reactance is infinite. At the high frequencies, the reactance becomes a very low value. And this has a, a 1 over f relationship because of the formula. We had 1 over 2 pi fc. So you can see that for any capacitor, at zero, it's the, the reactance and resulting impedance is infinite. And at infinitely high frequencies, the uh, reactance is zero. So for infinitely high frequencies, a capacitor is like a short. Sometimes the water analogy is helpful. So think of electrical current like water flowing through a pipe. In the case of a resistor in our circuit here, uh, the electricity flows through here and is restricted. The flow is restricted by these resistors. But in the case of the capacitor, the you know, water or electricity flows into here and the capacitor acts like a bucket. So the water flows into the bucket and it fills up the bucket. And once the bucket is full, nothing, nothing continues to flow. The circuit basically stops. But in an AC circuit, the voltage flips, and in our case, 60 times a second. So when the voltage flips polarity, the bucket dumps its contents back through the circuit and makes these LEDs light up. So you might be wondering, how does our circuit become more energy efficient? It has the same impedance. We said that uh, we showed that these circuits are almost equivalent. We had 5.6K for this resistor, 5.6K for this capacitor. This is the same, this is the same. How come the power meter only read 2.2 uh, watts for this case and only 0.4 watts for this case? We're gonna talk about that next time <laughs> in the exciting conclusion to our uh, series on impedance here, uh, where we're gonna talk about power factor volt amps and watts. If you've ever wondered about those things, uh, I'm going to talk about those next. You can actually use these, um, these cool little power meters to measure power factor, volt amps, and such. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe for, for future elect electrical tutorials, and um, feel free to post comments about what, you'd, what topics you'd like to see. Okay, see you next time. Bye. Postscript. So you might be wondering why I left this resistor in with the capacitor circuit. I said that we could you know, size a capacitor such that it would replace almost any impedance that we want in this circuit. So why did I bother leaving this resistor in? Uh, it's actually more of a practical matter. I mean, if, in a perfect world, we, we definitely could build this circuit without any resistance and make it purely capacitive, use just a capacitor to limit the current. But here's the problem. In, in AC current, you know, we have a cycle that looks like this. And at some point, we have to build our circuit and then plug it into the wall. So if we happen, and, and this is just running constantly. So if we happened to plug in our circuit right at this point in time, everything would be great. The circuit would see uh, a wave that was nice and, 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 you know, starting at zero and flowing up and down normally. But what happens if we decided to plug in our circuit here? That wouldn't be so good. So then, you know, if zero is here, our circuit would see something like this. Voltage would be zero, and then suddenly we put the plug into the outlet, and suddenly we get a nice sharp transition right up like this, and then a nice smooth sine wave. Now this sharp edge right here is not 60 hertz. 
it's actually composed of, of a, a bunch of frequencies, many of which are higher than 60 hertz. So our capacitor has a much lower impedance during this very sharp spike, this very sharp voltage transition. And uh, that would cause too much current to flow through the circuit and it would cause the LED to die. <laughs> so I tried it, you know, obviously I wanted to find out what would happen myself. So I built the circuit, uh, you know, just like you see here without the resistor and plugged it in. And after about 10 cycles of me plugging and unplugging it, the LED was just about toasted. Uh, it would still light, but kind of dimly. Uh, it wasn't doing very well. So during this really short time, this is probably only gonna last about a millisecond, there will be a much higher current flowing through the LED. So this limits the so-called inrush current. And it's um, purely a practical matter uh, just because you know, you, you can't plug in your circuit at the zero cross point every time. You have to anticipate this sudden surge.